You are a child of God. You are wonderfully and awesomely made, and God loves you just as you are. Without conditions, no matter what you believe, or who you love. You are a child of God. Hi, I'm Linda. Welcome to Worship with First Christian Church, located in downtown St. Joseph, Missouri, and wherever you are today. We hope this online worship experience offers you just a few minutes to unplug from your regular routine and step into awareness of God's sacred presence through music, scripture, prayer, message, and communion. Today we continue our exploration of the idea of the underground church as we wonder together if we might be following in the tradition of those historical church movements that dared to be a little different dared to ask difficult questions without seeking easy answers, dared to practice the radical welcome and grace of Jesus, dared to follow the way that leads all of us to the heart of God's love. We hope you will want to be a part of that underground church movement with us and know that you are welcome here in all your God-given uniqueness just as you are. Let's worship together. We each are born with a candle burning. This is the flame that lights the way. This is the love that shines within us, fills our hearts and dawns the day. Soft into silence, move through the night. Shadows of innocence, light into light. Heart of creation, reaching out for truth. Circle of unity, each one shall choose. Gift of the Spirit, opening to grace, lost in the mystery, love lights embrace, windswept awakening, reaching out for truth, visioning unity, each one shall choose. Honoring the light that shines within you. Honoring the light that shines within you. Honoring the light, the light that shines within. We each are born with a candle burning. This is the flame that lights the way. This is the love that shines within us, fills our hearts and dawns the day. We each are born with a candle burning. This is the flame that lights the way. This is the love that shines within us, fills our hearts and dawns the day. Washed into wonder, love shall rejoice. Light of eternity, joy into joy. Justice, compassion, calling out for truth. Courage, community, each one shall choose. Honoring the light that 
shines within you, honoring the light that shines within you, honoring the light, the light that shines within. We each are born with a candle burning. This is the flame that lights the way. This is the love that shines within us, fills our hearts and dawns the day. We each are born with a candle burning. This is the flame that lights the way. This is the love that shines within us, fills our hearts and dawns the day. Thank you for joining me for a time of meditation and prayer. I struggled this week to find words to articulate what I'm feeling and saying. So this morning or this afternoon or whenever you're seeing this, I invite you to listen to these words and wisdom from Black Liturgies on Instagram. For those who don't know what to say when the world is burning, if you don't have the words yet, try silence. In doing so, we amplify those voices that are most prone to being drowned out by the noise of the ignorant. Maybe it's not your voice you need to hear today. Listen. Not all silence is born of cowardice. Practice a sacred decentering. Your inherent expectation that your role is savior, or that you should know and understand what's best for other nations after a quick Google search, is precisely what must be dismantled for their protection. Many people in the U.S. have no business centering our own opinions and emotions right now. It is often just an attempt to demonstrate moral superiority when we're too afraid to approach the mirror. Listen, learn, you are not the hero in this story. De-center. James Baldwin writes, ignorance allied with power is the most ferocious enemy justice can have. Sacred voice. Release us from these empty cravings for unity that come at no cost to the oppressor. Lead us towards spaces of costly advocacy. We confess that in speaking up on behalf of the oppressed, we too soon become enamored with the sound of our own voices. Our egos spoil even our best intentions. Show us when the voices of the vulnerable are being drowned out by the cacophony of the privileged. Help us to decenter ourselves in a world that perpetually eclipses the voices of the globally oppressed. Guide us into a solidarity that demands something of us. Let us learn to risk ourselves on behalf of the vulnerable, believing that when one of us is harmed, we all are. But keep us from that obsessive attunement which is prone towards savior complexes and feigned allyship. Remind us that we are not the heroes of every story. Inhale, I listen for the silenced. Exhale, I am not the hero of every story. Amen.
Your generous financial support not only allows us to continue our online ministry, but also supports our many efforts, which reach out to those in need. We invite you to share your financial gifts through the mail to the church office or via our quick and easy online Tithely Giving app. You'll find a link to the app in the description below today's video or on our website. Today we continue our exploration of what it might mean to be a part of the underground church. Our text comes from the book of Acts, a continuation of the Gospel of Luke, which offers a fairly idealized portrait of the early church. Reading from Acts 4, 32 through 37. Now the whole group of those who believed were one of heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. There was a Levite, a native of Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him, then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Well, there's no getting around the fact today that the world is in a horrible mess. It almost makes the idea of talking about anything else today seem kind of frivolous, doesn't it? Violence continues to rise between the Israelis and Hamas, and as those two governments fight fire with fire, innocent civilians, as always, are the collateral damage. And as the violence escalates, there doesn't seem to be any hope in sight. It just continues and continues, and this is, of course, having ramifications around the world, including here in our own country. We really are a global community now. A mess anywhere else is our mess too. And so I imagine if you're like me, you're yearning right now for better days. The good old days when there wasn't so much violence, when the world was at peace. And if we're honest, if we really look at the history of the world, we have to admit, those good old days never existed. In his book, The Underground Church, Robin Meyer suggests that in the list of the seven deadly sins, we left one out, the sin of nostalgia. Today, we might call it the sin of make America great again. It's a yearning for the good old days when certain people in our society remembered their place and kept their mouths shut, when the right people were in charge and when everything was going just as it was intended. Problem is, no one is quite able to name just exactly when those good old days were, at least not without admitting that they weren't good necessarily for everyone. We do this with our personal lives too, don't we? We look at the mess of our own lives, our homes, our families, our jobs, and we imagine that everybody else has their act together. Everybody else is happy and, and successful and self-actualized. When in most cases, if we peek behind the facade, they are sitting in the same sort of mess that we are, or one like it, because that is the nature of human life and human relationship and human community. And, you know, the church doesn't escape that kind of mess. Oh, I know, if we read our text today from Acts, we might be tempted to get all nostalgic and wish that our church today could be like it was back then. If you read Acts 3, it paints a picture of an ideal Christian community marked by unity and generosity and selflessness. 
the believers are described as being of one heart and soul, highlighting their shared purpose and their deep unity. This sense of unity is further exemplified by their willingness to share their possessions and provide for everyone else in need. They they even sell their land and property and distribute the proceeds to anybody who who needs something. And this passage presents a compelling vision then of the early church as a community of believers who put their faith into action, actively caring for one another and ensuring that no one among them was in need. And I gotta admit, that sounds pretty amazing. I can see why someone might say, now if the church was more like that, maybe I'd show up on Sunday morning. But before they're too quick to do that, I'd want to point them to just a little later in the text of Acts, to Acts chapter five, which recounts the story of Ananias and Sapphira a couple who attempted to deceive that early Christian community and withhold a portion of their sale proceeds when their greediness and their deceit is made public to their fellow followers of Jesus, they both are mysteriously struck dead. And this is just two chapters after our reading today of how wonderful and loving and life-giving and affirming and sharing was the early church community. So what's my point in sharing all that? Well, it's just to say that the early church was, well, it was pretty much like the church today. It was messy. There was no pure, unified, happy-go-lucky early church where everyone was equally committed to the mission set forth by Jesus. There was, in fact, very little uniformity in the early church when it came to theology, to ritual practice, to the scripture text that they read, to liturgy, or even belief sometimes. In fact, much of the early church was led by the Spirit. And since you can never predict where the Spirit is going to turn up or where it's going to lead you, it was, by definition, pretty messy. And Robin Myers argues that what attracted people to Christianity in those first three centuries was not some unified agreement on theology or authority or hierarchy or belief. What attracted others to the church was that it offered them an alternative lifestyle, one in which people were challenged to practice radical community, peace and nonviolence, generosity of resources, and to offer life and hope to one another, while the empire was often only offering death and despair. The empire, by the way, wasn't just the backdrop or the background of the early church. It was the church's response to the empire that formed its very ethos. The church was a threat to Rome because it was a direct refutation of the values of that domination system, calling people from loyalty to the emperor to fidelity to the way of Jesus, calling people to live in a radically alternative, loving, peace-filled community right in the midst of the empire itself. So, where does all of this leave us today? Well, I hope we can at least agree that the early church, in fact, the church throughout all of history, has always been a bit of a mess. And how really could it be otherwise, if you think about it? People, relationships, community, it's all messy. And in truth, when I look for people to walk alongside me in my life, to companion me in my faith journey, I don't necessarily look to the person who supposedly has their act together. I want to walk with the one whose life is at least as messy as mine, because that's more likely where we are going to encounter God's spirit in the mess of it all. Secondly, rather than giving into the sin of nostalgia and imagining some time in the past when the church community was so pure, when everyone was unified in behavior and belief, I think we can take a cue from the diversity of the early church, the messiness of the early church, and realize that what can hold us together despite the mess is our commitment still today to form an alternative community 
one unified by the spirit of mission and service, one animated by the transformed life we have discovered in the ministry and teachings of Jesus, and one emboldened by a recognition that we can accomplish more for God's kingdom of love and peace together than we could ever hope to accomplish on our own. So, who's in? Who's ready to be part of the underground church, part of radical alternative community? Who's ready to be part of God's messy, dynamic, grace-filled spirit for the sake of the world? Amen. As our service draws to a close, we have one more stop to make at the table of communion. The table of God's dream where all are fed and all have a place to belong. You're invited to join us in this meal, either by using something you have at home to represent the bread and the cup, or you may simply join us in spirit today. Remember with me now the story of faith, how Jesus met with his disciples and took the bread blessed it and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, my life lived for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And we recall how after the meal, he took the cup and he poured out the wine and he gave it to them saying, this is the wine of the new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin. And I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day I drink it with you in the kingdom of God's love. Now that we have shared in this sacred meal, let's join in saying together the prayer that scripture tells us Jesus taught to his own disciples. Our creator who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship today. We hope it was a meaningful time for you and that something you gleaned from these sacred moments may carry you forward into the days ahead with an assurance of the grace and love of God. Until we meet again, friends, go in peace. Amen. Sign up for our weekly email newsletter to keep up to date on all our ministry news. See the link in the description below today's video. Interested in becoming an online member of our faith community? Contact Pastor Brian to learn more. Our Blessing Box Outreach is always in need of non-perishable food to help feed those in need. Drop food donations at the church or give a monetary donation via the Tithely link below. This has been an online worship experience brought to you by First Christian of St. Joseph, Missouri and produced by online ministry coordinator Jason Jasper. 
please see the description below today's video for important links and media attributions. First Christian. Where love comes first.